underground miners should take their safety training seriously because uh, it, that's the why you, how you go home at night. Uh, you don't want to be hurt. You don't want to be killed. And, and when you're training a new person, you should do it just like you're training your own child. It's very important to do a thorough pre-shift inspection of a man basket because your life could depend on that. Uh, when you're up in the air roof bolting or hand scaling or doing whatever you have to do up there, if anything would happen, you want to make sure that every safety device on that machine is working properly. It's also uh, federal regulation and state regulations that when you are up off the ground that you wear fall protection at all times. I had one bad experience when, when I was first learning how to scale. Uh, my partner and I were up in the air. Uh, I told him to pull a rock that was on his right side, which released a rock that was behind us, which released another into my left, and then finally one directly over top of me. When it came down on top of me, it pinned my left hand to the rail of the basket and you uh, cut me to where you could see the bones in two of my fingers. Looking back, what we should have done was sound tested the roof. We would have known that that rock above us was loose. But we didn't and I suffered the consequences. The way to check a roof for integrity with, uh, by sound is to take the bar and you know, tap it against the roof and you, um, you can also put your hand against the roof to feel the vibration and you can tell by the sound and the vibration if it's solid or if it's loose. You can hear the uh, roof integrity for about 10 to 12 inches uh, in that range. Once a rock gets really thick it will sound that way even though there is a crack above it because it's, it's just a big enough mass to make the sound. If a miner is in sounding a roof for safety, the thing, if you have a lot of surrounding noise, one thing you need to do is remove that noise. So you need to have that equipment move out of the area or shut down long enough for you to sound that roof and make sure it's safe to work there. We had a scary situation when we were back in a dead end room and the roof started cracking and popping and there was only one way out and that was directly out under that roof. So we, uh, from the years of experience, I knew what the sounds meant and how critical they were. So we just waited until we heard the right sounds to know that we could hurry up and evacuate that room. If a miner feels an area needs scaled, uh, all miners have the right to have a safe workplace. So that right away they should withdraw from the area, uh, call for a scaler. They can call for a mechanical scaler, a hand scaler, depending on what they're seeing. And you should always barricade the area off so nobody else enters that particular area. Uh, over the years, some, uh, some roofs will give you a warning that they're about to fail, and some they don't. If they already gave the warning before you got there, you know, it, it could possibly fall. So you got to be extremely observant when you go in and out of any work area. When a miner leaves one area and goes to another area to work, uh, a proper workplace exam should be done. You need to really look and say to yourself, what in here can hurt me? And then eliminate all the hazards that you find before you start working. Uh, my, a lot of miners, new miners, typically look out there and see that big rock and they want to pull that big rock and then you got, they got to learn they can't go out there and pull it first. They got to work their way to it. It's a temptation no matter if you're on a mechanical scale or a hand scale. You really want to go out there and get that big rock and you have to refrain from doing that and work safely out to it. I had another experience with the rocks coming down on us. Uh, we were again new scalers just learning. We went into a room that had uh, V-shaped faults in the roof and, and we, we saw them. We knew the room had like, we always called it a sawtooth roof. 
And we went in there, and as we were extending out, we saw the cracks, but they were tight. So we went on, we extended out farther, hit a second set of them, then we found a third set of them, went on beyond it, and started hand scaling the roof behind them. And all of a sudden, the first one let go. And I saw it coming out of the roof, grabbed my partner, and told him to get down and hold the mid rail because I knew it was going to spring us pretty good. First one hit the boom, broke in half, shot us back up in the air. The second one let go, it came down, hit us again and pulled us down. It broke and shot us up back up in the air. And finally the third one came out. It landed on the boom, stayed on the boom, slid down and slowly brought us back up. But in uh, what we should have, uh, we had on our fall protection, which is a good thing because if we wouldn't, it would have probably tossed us out of the basket. So you should also backscale areas. Just because it was scaled one time it doesn't mean it'll stay that way forever. You need to go back, revisit these areas, check them constantly. And a good backscaling program is important in a mine to constantly be rechecking. Once you leave an area, you just don't go back in there again, assuming it was okay a while ago. It may not be okay now when you've returned. The general purpose of roof bolting in an underground stone mine is to laminate the roof together to create a strong beam. Uh, you check and see if there's any voids in there, and if there is, then you definitely want to bolt it together and create a good strong beam for your workers to be underneath. A beam is the uh, rock that is, you know, you're taking the rock that is stretching pillar to pillar and you're trying to make it thicker. It's just like taking two befores. You nail one to another to the next one, it gets stronger and stronger as you stack all these layers and tie them all together. It's very critical that the bolts are, that a miner installs the bolts properly. Uh, a lot of your lives are dependent on it. You want to make sure that you, uh, that they're on the proper pattern, that they're the proper bolts for that strata and that they are torqued to the proper specifications. It's very critical that a roof boulder takes this job very seriously. MSHA requires that pull tests be done uh, in your mine when you start first start putting them in, and then you should do it periodically, uh, especially if you notice any changes in the strata, or it's just a good idea on a regular basis to have them come in and redo the pull test to make sure they are doing exactly what they were intended to do like they did the fart when they were first installed. When you're a new miner, you should be pay attention to anywhere that's roof bolted. Uh, if you see a plate is loose, hey, either that bolt is stretched some, a rock has come out, uh, and you'll see instances where the plates have been busted off, which tells you that it's taken too much load, so that area needs blocked off and shut down. The bedding plane is a uh, horizontal surface when the uh, layers were formed in the earth uh, and it's just a nice flat smooth surface. The bedding plane can usually be seen from outside of the mine and it's a, uh, a preferable place to start in because it gives you a beautiful solid smooth roof. When you're looking at roof and rib, you should always be checking for uh, light spots because that usually tells you there's something loose. And when you're walking, try to stay away from your ribs because you're, it's, it's another hazard area. Where the uh, roof and the pillar meet is a, a stress area and it, it, it's typical for rocks to come loose in that area and that's a very important place for miners to constantly be looking for loose material. A ledge in the roof would uh, indicate to a miner that something has happened there, something has fallen out of there, and it's a good place to uh, keep your eye on it. It could need roof bolted. Uh, a lot of them are roof bolted to make sure they stay secure. Light colored material on a roof or a rib to a miner is a good indication that there's a crack behind the rock. 
and what the ventilation is causing the air to get behind it, drying it out. And it, it'll really stand out on dark colored rock and it's, it's very obvious to see them when they're loose. If a miner does see the light colored rocks on a roof or rib right away, they should, uh, it should be barricaded off and we should bring in a machine, remove the rock. Miners should be paying attention when they're walking through the mine for this because it's a very good indicator that the rocks are becoming loose. Uh, in some cases it's just, you know, it's an edge of a rock, the air dries it out and it's not really loose, but you really need to investigate all of them to make sure. If a miner would find rocks laying on a haul road, the first thing they would do is they would cone off the area and uh, change the traffic direction. Management would change traffic direction while this is being taken care of. A new man, when he thinks he sees something or has a question, he should always go to management or an experienced person to uh, make sure to clarify the situation. A new man should always be with a trained uh, person that's got years and years of experience so they're always safe. Border scoping of a hole in the roof is an instrument used that you uh, insert it up in the hole and it shows you, it's a very bright magnified instrument that shows you any uh, deformities in the roof. We use an extensometer to uh, watch the sag in the roof. It's an instrument that you insert in the hole and it has two points. It's anchored up at the top and it's anchored at the bottom. And it has an adjustable tension rod on it where you can set it for the amount of sag you're looking for. And when that roof begins to sag, it'll, it pops the clip off and drops a flag warning you that the roof is starting to move which is a very valuable tool to be what you know, watch roofs that uh, you know that you're not watching all the time. The miners call the extensometer a guardian angel because it's watching over them as they're working and another valuable tool in keeping the miners safe. Uh, I've seen flags tripped on these guardian angels at another mine I was working in and uh, we went in and you have to barricade the area and check and to see what caused them to be tripped. Sometimes it's a loose roof, sometimes if you get enough vibration from blasting it could trip them. If you're a miner and you come in and see a guardian angel tripped, you should immediately block off the area, get a management or somebody that can get in there and assess what's going on. We use a scratch bar in the, in the holes in our mine to uh, check for separations. A scratch bar is a, about a quarter inch aluminum rod that's uh, bent 90 degrees on the end and flattened so that you can pull it up and down the sides of the hole and it will catch on any little separations that you find in there. When a miner has to park a piece of equipment in the mine, he should always turn the machine against the pillar. He should uh, chalk the wheels and never get out of, uh, between the machine and the rib. Always get out into the middle of the road. You, you have the possibility of the machine shifting and pinning you or crushing you or loose material on the rib could fall and hurt you or kill you. I've been in this business now almost 39 years. Uh, some advice to the new miners are pay attention to the safety rules, pay attention to your training, learn everything you can learn off a experienced miner, only his good habits, and uh, always pre-shift your equipment and make sure it's in great operating condition, and always, always wear your safety equipment when you're mining. It's always uh, very important to be trained on the machine you're about to run. And uh, there's task training on it, be extremely observant. He needs to learn from the professionals, they're the people that's got the experience. And pay attention to all rules and maintain all equipment, and keep all safety devices, devices working at all times.